Hi, this is here with another video. And if you're currently experiencing currency starvation, but not only that, but also the trade site being permanently down, this is going to be a video for you. Today, we're going to talk about how to make currency without trading, because it's a sole self and expert. That's something I'm pretty good at. So lately, there has been a lot of issues. The league mechanic doesn't drop much raw currency. And while the crucible trees are very strong and also build enabling, they can also be, well, yeah, you're just kind of currency starved. And on top of that, the trade side is actually down a lot, so you can't even trade or buy things that you need. So what do you do? Well, there are a couple of mechanics that are so easy and a good way of making money. This league, Chaos Recipe, isn't the worst thing. For if you don't know what Chaos Recipe is, it's you sell a, well, if it's an identified full set of items, so like two rings, an amulet, a two-hander, a belt, etc., uh, you get one Chaos, and if it's unidentified, you get two Chaos. But there is something a lot better than this. That's it, you guessed it, Expedition. Tuyen in particular has a large amount of currency that you can buy. So I generally get to like level 90 before I start using all the things because he will sell between item level 83 and item level 86 things. So it will be a lot better stuff. But yeah, this is really, really good. And I normally just, uh, the, the rule is you can buy, you can click the middle three times and then you have to take the offer. So like one, two, three, and then if it didn't go there, I would have to take whatever he um, suggested the price should be. I also just, if I'm lazy, just click there, and it pretty much always buys it. So I'm just looking for things that I need, which on Soul Cell Fund might be different than Trade League, but, you know, I also do look at the prices. Sometimes, like, there would be a range on what things can sell for, right? So these uh, Awaken Sextants might sell for, like, 100 to 300. So you just go through and you buy whatever you need and you try to manage what you're uh, needing, what you're buying. And you can look for divine orbs, exalted orbs. You get a lot of chaos, gem cutter prisms, which I'm like really, really struggling with on solo cell phone. And uh, he will also sell like jewelers and things like that. But this is where I'm getting a lot of my currency. And that's currently all I'm doing is I'm actually farming pretty low tier maps and just spam farming this because yeah, it's, it's what I really need right now. So if I do run out of currency as well, I can buy more from Danny and his rerolls will also let you buy the reroll currency. Now you will be able to buy the black side stuff at a discount sometimes, so keep an eye out for that. That might be the thing you're the most interested in. The other things are good as well, like Gwenin for item level basis, like here's item level 86 mittens. I can try to buy crimson jewels, etc. And they have a chance of being uniques, but I'm generally not doing them for uniques. I'm mostly looking for bases. So that's the best way for me to get them in SSF. And Rog is obviously good for crafting, but I did really want to focus on Tuyen being extremely good for currency. So for my Atlas passives, what I have at the moment is all of the expedition things here. I have expedition here. And I have thought about taking expedition here just to make it spawn more, but it is spawning a decent amount already. And uh, other than that, I'm focusing on essences. That is obviously worth a lot trading and it's really good for crafting. And I have uh, divination cards are duplicated. This isn't worth it, probably. I just really like it in SSF. Makes a fun highlight moment now and again of getting... Yeah, I've gotten two mage blood cards two times now uh, in different leagues. So they can be pretty cool. But, you know, realistically, your points are probably spent better elsewhere. Also, I do have the strongbox nodes and uh shrine nodes i feel like just the amount of stuff it adds to the map like really really adds up i want to have a lot of monsters there and i would like probably a harbinger next just so i have a lot of monsters to kill i'm getting a lot of currency from that a lot of fractured gear and it also helps with map sustain but obviously i have a lot of things to still unlock but um uh, there are other things as well ritual a lot of people like it doesn't give you an insane amount of currency but um expedition is definitely the play for that if you haven't interacted a lot with Expedition, generally what I do is I look out for the ones that are like with increased rare monsters, increased blue monsters, uh, increased quantity, increased artifact drops, anything like that, and I try to stack it. And if you put it like early in the loop, the things like pack size, rares, etc., then, you know, the last one will like be really, really big, really, really dense. Uh, you do want to be really careful with like physical monsters or, or rather monsters overwhelm. It's probably like the most dangerous stat. And while you might have been having that on blue altars, it's not that dangerous there because the monsters don't do fist damage. But the expedition monsters do. So if they do overwhelm you and you don't have a lot of conversion da damage taken as, you will die very quickly. Uh, and there are like, obviously you have to watch out for the 
immune to ignite or immune to the damage type of what you're dealing so keep that in mind and another thing that i really want to mention as well and i have some videos about efficiency and while it's important and at the end of the day it's like important that you enjoy how you play but picking up less in maps and like focusing on just speeding a little bit as some of you might have seen me doing on stream uh ends up making you a lot more currency per hour than well yeah going back in the map by being rares etc that's why you'll see a lot of people will like walk buy things that might seem obvious to pick up another thing that's really good is once you get to tier 14 to 16 maps the red influence in particular will drop a lot of chaos orbs one of the outcomes is you know the the red monsters can drop chaos and while yeah it's really nice that the blue one can drop divines it is very rare i only had it three or four times last thing and i played a lot I had three level 100 characters and I just played a large amount so the red altars are probably the best for like um bulk currency so Keep that in mind. I know a lot of you guys are struggling with currency and stuff this day. That's why I wanted to make this video. I do think that and hope that they will make uh, some improvements to like trash drops. Best suggestion I saw in my chat so far was I think by Headhunter where he said it would be cool if there was some sort of delirium type reward where the longer you held, the more the rewards went up too. So I hope that gets fixed soon. But in the meantime, try these tips and see if they work for you. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching the content on YouTube lately. Thanks for subbing. More importantly, Try to die less than I do.